Costa, Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chow, Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen, U.S. Trade Representative, Robert Lighthizer, Small Business Administration, Administrator Linda McMahon, Advisor to the President Ivanka Trump, Senior Advisor to the President Jared Kushner, and Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy Coordination Chris Liddell. On another note, the President is once again fulfilling a promise he made to the American people, and this morning the Acting Attorney General signed the final rule making clear that bump stocks are illegal because they fall within the definition of machine guns that are banned under federal firearms law. A 90-day period now begins which persons in possessions of bump stock type devices must turn those devices to an ATF field office or destroy them by March 21st. Instructions for proper destruction will be posted on ATF's website today. Lastly, Representative Martha McSally has been appointed to the U.S. Senate and we congratulate her. She has been a strong partner in the House of Representatives, helping advance a number of the administration's priorities, including rebuilding our military and increased border security. The president applauds Governor Ducey for his swift and qualified selection, and he appreciates Senator John Kyle and thanks him for his service to the people of Arizona. And with that, I'll take your questions. John. Sir, a reaction to the delay in the Flynn sentencing and, and the rather unusual inquiry from Judge Sullivan this morning asking prosecutors if Flynn possibly committed treason? Uh, the delay is something between General Flynn and the courts, uh, and that's something for them to determine what that timeline looks like. In the meantime, we wish General Flynn well, and we'll continue to focus on uh, doing what we do here every single day. What about, the, what about the inquiry as to whether he committed treason? Does the president see any reason why Flynn should be asked if he committed treason? Uh, I'm not aware of anything that we would know of that would indicate that. Certainly. Senator, I was in the courthouse at the courthouse last hour when the, the judge Emmett Sullivan basically said that he was disgusted by Michael Flynn's crimes. He said that uh, he had disdain for Flynn. Uh, Flynn said that he knew that it was illegal to lie to the FBI, and he was ready to accept responsibility. This was all before agreeing to a delay in sentencing. Given that, are you in a position now, or would you like to revisit your comments earlier today that uh, the FBI ambushed Flynn here? No. Um, I, we still firmly believe, look, the things that may have taken place, again, that's for the judge to make that determination uh, whether he engaged in something inappropriate. What we do know that was inappropriate by own self-admittance of James Comey is that the FBI broke standard protocol in the way that they came in and ambushed General Flynn and in the way that they questioned him and in the way that they encouraged him not to have White House counsel's office present. And we know that because James Comey told us that, and he said that the very reason that they did it was because the only reason that they did it, it was the Trump administration and they thought they could get away with it. Uh, those are facts, and certainly um, there may be other issues there, but that we don't uh, have any reason to want to walk that back. Senator? Very quickly about sure. uh, Michael Flynn. Um, he has cooperated with the special counsel's office and met with them 19 times. Is there a particular reason why the president has not said that he is a rat, the way that he has said that Michael Cohen is a rat for cooperating with Russia? Look, we know Michael Cohen to uh, be a liar on a number of fronts, and um, the president's opinion is extremely clear on that front. I don't see any reason to uh, go beyond that comment at this point. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Two questions for you on the government shutdown. First, can you clarify us the current White House position towards the continuing resolution that's floating up on the Hill? Is it a demand for $1.6 billion in border wall funding, or is it supporting continuing resolution to take this matter up after the after the Christmas break? You know, at this point, the Senate's thrown out a lot of ideas. Uh, we're disappointed in the fact that they've yet to actually vote on something and pass something. So when they do that, we'll make a determination on whether or not we're going to sign that. In the meantime, we're looking at every avenue available to us possible. The president's asked every one of his cabinet secretaries to look for funding that can be used uh, to protect our borders and for the give the president the ability to fulfill his constitutional obligation to protect the American people by having a secure border. So we're looking at the other options. In the meantime, we'll see what the Senate does, and we'll let you know when we have an announcement on that front. Uh, second question. I'm going to, sorry, Senator, I'm going to keep moving just because we're tied to time. Go ahead. So following up on that, there's other sources that could potentially pay for the wall. Which agencies are you looking at? You've mentioned DOD. As I said, we're looking at, we've, the president's asked every uh, agency to look and see if they have money that can be used for that purpose, and, if, and that's exactly what we're doing. And if they can find that money, does that mean the president would accept um, a budget 
a proposal that does not include any money to fund new border wall construction? Once again, we want to see what the Senate can pass. Uh, they've thrown out a lot of ideas. They've yet to take a vote. Once they do that, we're, we're disappointed in the process and their uh, inability to put something forward. Once they make a decision and they put something on the table, we'll make a determination on whether or not we'll move forward on either a short-term or long-term friend and yeah. Sorry, John, I'm going to keep moving. Josh, go ahead. Uh, Michael Flynn did have tweeted that he did lie to the FBI and to them repeatedly and that he was working for the foreign government uh, during the campaign. Does that concern the president? I mean, he seems to be concerned that Michael Cohen is a liar. Does he concern that one of his top aides lied to the FBI and was working for a foreign government? Uh, not when it comes to things that have anything to do with the president. Uh, the activities that he has said to, and I'll, again, we'll let the court make that determination, to have engaged in don't have anything to do with the president. Let's remember what uh, the whole thing that this started is supposed to be about. It's whether or not Russia influenced the election and whether or not the president had anything to do with it. We know that the that Russia tried to create chaos within the election, but certainly not that they actually impacted it. The only reason that the president is the president is because he was a better candidate and beat Hillary Clinton. We also know that the president never colluded with Russia. So that's the whole reason that we have this, and we know those things to be false. Is the president concerned that Michael Flynn lied to representative of his own government and was working for another government during the campaign? Does that is that concern him or not? Look, there's certainly concern, but that's something for the court to make that determination, and we'll let them do that. Positive comments about him when he's pleaded to this. Uh, again, we're going to let the court play that out, and they'll make a determination on whether or not he engaged in something well, right or wrong. Why is the president making positive comments about him? given these things that he's quite guilty It's perfectly acceptable for the president to make a positive comment about somebody while we wait to see what the court's determination is. Like, Sarah, Sarah, let me ask you about a tweet that the president sent out earlier today as he continues to vent frustration about the Federal Reserve. He said that uh, he hopes the Fed reads the Wall Street Journal op-ed. A part of the op-ed, the journal points out that U.S. growth might be slowing. The president's tariff battles have reduced investment. Housing and autos are down, and there's a few cracks showing as well in the credit markets. When the president talks about the Fed, is he just venting at this point, or is he genuinely worried that if there is a rate hike tomorrow, that the economy will slow down? Uh, the president is stating his opinion, uh, which he is perfectly within his right to do so. I think that is one of the reasons people like him, is because he does that, and he does it regularly. Um, he's been very clear about what his position is, while at the same time he understands that the Fed is an independent agency. That doesn't take away the president's right to state his opinion on a particular matter. And let me ask you as a relationship. Sorry, I'm going to keep it in Francesca. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Sarah. I, I just want to clarify one thing and then move back on to the border wall. Uh, but the clarification on Michael Flynn, you said it has nothing to do with the president. But one of the things that the judge brought up today was that it was so concerning to him because Michael Flynn lied inside the White House as the national security advisor to the president. So is the White House disputing at this point that Michael Flynn is a liar? Because that's also the reason that he was fired. He was fired to lie. We're disputing that any actions he engaged in had nothing to do with with the president, that just because it, maybe he did do those things, but that doesn't have anything to do with the president directly. Okay, when it comes to when it comes to the border wall, today today on television, you mentioned that the president would be willing to accept 1.6 billion dollars for the wall, the way that I understood it when you said it, and also that plays into a broader 25 billion dollar uh, bill over 10 years. Is that what the White House's current offer is to Capitol Hill that it would accept? Uh, again, we are continuing to have constant and regular conversations with the Hill. I'm not ne going to negotiate here. We've laid out clearly what our parameters are with members of Congress. We want to know what they can pass. We want to know uh, what they think they can actually get done. We've laid out what we'd like to see. Um, in the meantime, we're looking at other areas where we can draw money from to make sure that the president can actually protect our border and protect American citizens. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. With, with the deficit ballooning to over a trillion dollars under this president, where are the additional monies for this wall going to come from, and why is he asking the American taxpayer for them when he promised Mexico was going to pay? Look, we're not asking American taxpayers for that. Uh, we are looking at existing funding through other agencies right now that we can draw on to do that in immediate, uh, immediately. So the president's been the clear. Debt. The president has been clear that the USMCA deal would provide additional revenue through that deal that would show that Mexico is paying for the wall. The, treasury, the, the, the trade benefits, if there are any, don't, don't go to the Treasury. 
He's saying that the revenue provided and the money that would be saved through the USMCA deal, we could pay for the wall four times over. And by doing that new trade deal, we have the opportunity to pay for the wall. But trade benefits go to private citizens. Look, they don't go to the United States Treasury. About, he's talking about the general revenue that comes from that. So you're going to tax? No, we're not taxing. We're talking about additional revenue that wouldn't have existed without the president getting a new deal. Have you done the math on that? that, that, that there, are, there have been a number of things that we've looked at in which we know we'll have additional revenue that comes in through the USMCA. From the USMCA we think into we'll the have, Treasury? We think there will be more than that that comes in. Jeff, go ahead. Uh, Sarah, the, it was announced today that the president's charity is being dissolved. Does the president or anyone in his family have regrets about how that charity was handled? Uh, that's something that I would refer you to the Trump Organization. Organization. That's not something we could comment on yes, here. One other question, yeah. another topic. Sorry, can I'm you just, can you just clarify, Sarah, real yeah. quick on something okay. else, whether the president has given any indications to Turkey that he would be willing to extradite the, the cleric Gulen? Uh, the only thing he said is that we would take a look at it. Nothing further at this point beyond take that. Look at take a look at it, but nothing uh, committal at all in that process, just that he would look into it. Yeah. Yeah. You've been saying a lot that things don't have anything to do with the president, and he's just giving his opinion, and he has a right to give his opinion. But does he not have a broader right, I mean, a responsibility as far as, you know, if, if his national security advisor is lying, it, are, should he not be speaking on behalf of the American people, not just himself, President Trump, man under investigation, but, you know, in, in all these uh, aspects? You're talking about saying that he is just speaking for himself and he's not been uh, linked uh, to collusion, is the claim, and therefore, he, you know, it doesn't matter what he says. And the same thing with That's the Fed, right, that his uh, comments on the Fed have no bearing. He's just giving his opinion. What about him I speaking to the no American bearing. people? I said he's a, the, he's the president of the United States, and he should. Not only uh, does he have the ability to give his opinion, he should give his opinion. That's why the people elected him, is because they trusted him to make decisions on policy matters. They want to know what his position are on specific policies. He absolutely should state his opinion on uh, not just that, but on every topic that comes up that he wants to engage on. Well, a lot of people who are uh, somehow involved in investigations feel the FBI is unfairly targeting them, but the president normally has a different role we as We know for as a fact that the FBI engaged in an outrageous amount of political bias. The fact that anybody could deny that there was political bias within the FBI, particularly under James Comey's leadership, is frankly just laughable. I guess I'm wondering, using terms like rat and things like that to talk about people who are cooperating witnesses with the FBI, or people does he not who are have, dishonest and lying? Does I he mean, not have a broader responsibility like a to, to preserve confidence in the rule of law for, for the American people? Certainly, and that's why he has appointed new people uh, to help do exactly that, whether it's Director Ray, uh, a, a new attorney general, somebody that can come in uh, and be very transparent throughout this process. We'll take one last question. Yeah. Justin, the President's defense. About sure. I just wanted to go back to uh, the shutdown. And you keep saying that you've asked agencies to look for more money. And so on this issue of reprogramming specifically, is your red line in these negotiations that you need Congress to reprogram money explicitly? So DHS or the Defense Department or whoever it might be, say, the Congress say, you can spend this money that we didn't spend on something else on wall construction? Or no. are you saying that you think that you have the legal authority? And what are you, I guess, basing that legal authority on since uh, Nancy Pelosi said today that, in fact, that, that sort of authority doesn't I, I would never use Nancy Pelosi as my source for legal authority on probably anything, but I would use attorneys that work here at the White House and in agencies that uh, that's their entire job is determining whether or not something is legal, and we're looking to those individuals to find out so, uh, those so specific pots of money that can bonus, be used for that. A bonus amount of money that is sort of reprogrammed by Congress won't be necessary for the president's signature on uh on this budget bill. We, again, we would like to see uh, Congress pass an appropriations bill that fully funds our government and that allows the president to protect our border and provides substantial border security funding, um, both for the wall, for CBP, for ICE, all of DHS. Uh, but in the meantime, we're also looking at other avenues that would allow us to provide um, and do our constitutional authority and the president to be able to carry that out by protecting our border and protecting American citizens. I'd encourage you guys to Tune in the president's event. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Sarah. This is a one-minute briefing, Sarah. Do your job, Sarah.
Just heard from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, White House press secretary. The big question everybody was wondering today in this press conference, what does the White House have to say about the delay in former national security advisor Michael Flynn's sentencing? Now pushed back to March 13th. Sarah Sanders was very careful not to weigh in and just to sort of push it back onto the judge, saying that this is something that the judge has to weigh in and that the actions that he engaged in in the law had nothing to do with the president. That has been their take. We're also waiting to hear as to whether or not there could potentially be a government shutdown. We know the White House has been pushing for funding for the border wall. How far will they go? Will they allow for that border shut down to take place. Uh, they are waiting to see exactly what votes they could potentially get on the Hill. Uh, and they are asking for all government agencies to help with that shutdown. Also interesting, how concerned is the president about the economy? Uh, the president's been very public about where he stands on interest rates. And today, Sarah Huckabee Sanders also said that the president was chosen, in fact, by the people to weigh in and um, Tell his opinion. Why don't we bring in CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Zhang, who's there inside the briefing room. Weijia, why don't we start with Michael Flynn? Uh, what did the White House have to say exactly? What was their take? <laughs> You know, Sarah Sanders pretty much added to the narrative that President Trump has been peddling since Michael Flynn left the administration, and certainly even this morning ahead of the sentencing, uh, when President Trump wished him well in a sort of perplexing tweet. He said, good luck in court. It'll be interesting to hear what Flynn says, given the amount of pressure on him uh, to talk about Russian collusion and, of course, their highly successful campaign. Right after that, Sanders uh, said that Flynn was ambushed and that he was sort of a victim in all of this. And that's exactly what we heard again in this briefing. Uh, she did not walk back that uh, statement and she continued uh, to portray Flynn as a victim of this so-called witch hunt. Um, and so one of the questions that, you know, I think people repeatedly try to get out here today was why the sympathetic treatment from President Trump to General Flynn. Uh, we have seen this, especially in such stark contrast to his former attorney, Michael Cohen, who he has called a rat. And remember, these two men have done the same thing, which is strike a plea deal with special counsel Robert Mueller to lessen their own time behind bars. So the question is why President Trump has continued to be so Flynn friendly when he is disparaging uh, Cohen time and time again. And is it because he is concerned with the information that Flynn might continue to provide the special counsel or has already provided to Robert Mueller? And despite how many attempts there were to get to the heart of that, uh, Sanders didn't really answer why but said, you know, the president has every right to say positive things about whoever he wants, even if it's his former national security advisor who has uh, now admitted to lying. Um, and so she really tried to dig into the reason why he lied, that he was perhaps entrapped by federal investigators. Uh, so she was still really defendant about, um, you know, their overall stance toward Michael Flynn. Which I'm curious if you can read into the possibility if a government shutdown is going to happen. You know, it is interesting to see how many steps back the administration has seemed to have taken since that very dramatic meeting inside the Oval Office with Democratic leaders. You'll remember, Rena, we all watched it play out sort of in disbelief that President Trump not only said he was willing to take ownership of the shutdown, but that he would be proud to do that if it was to continue his uh, push for border wall funding. Today, here we are, and Sanders seemed to suggest that he would accept a low lower figure. Remember, his magic price tag is $5 billion, but now there's an idea that he will accept whatever the Democrats offer, $1.6 billion, specifically if and only if they are able to somehow drum up uh, the remaining amount of money through other agencies um, in order to make up for that so they ultimately get to that $5 billion price tag. And she seemed optimistic. She certainly did not repeat what President Trump has said, which is that he is willing to shut the government down. And so, you know, Sarah Sanders is saying that there is a lot of time and a lot of room for negotiations, but she's also saying she wants to see first what the Senate comes up with. Mm. She wants to see something, they want to see the figures, and they want to see how they can work with those figures without committing to exactly what agencies might suffer in terms of money being pushed around to get to that magic figure to build the wall. Mm. Uh, were you surprised we should have learned that the president will be going to Davos this year, or this coming year? 
No, I, you know, I think that we anticipated that. Um, certainly, this is another opportunity for him on the world stage and a big one at that. So um, this wasn't necessarily a surprise, but certainly looking ahead, another huge responsibility as all eyes are on him, um, sort of as a leader here to set the tone for uh, the economic forum. And, and so he will be joined by several um, administration leaders, cabinet members. Interestingly enough, Sarah Sanders specifically mentioned uh, Department of Homeland Secretary, uh, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, because there's been a lot of chatter about whether she would be next to go since she is the mentee of uh, Chief of Staff John Kelly, who is out the door. So it seems that is not as imminent as we might thought, but of course, you never know. Weijia, what's the countdown to baby now? <laughs> any day baby now, Baby huh? is any day about two and a half weeks officially. Oh, so she could come right now. It could Who be knows? any moment. It could be in the White House <laughs> briefing room. You don't know. But can I say, my friend, you look absolutely great and everything. Thank you so much. You seem to be doing very well. Makes me happy to see that. Weijia Shane coming to us from the White House. Thank you very much, Weijia. Sure. Well, we do have some really sad news to report. Actress Penny Marshall has died. She was known for playing Laverne from Laverne and Shirley. Her publicist said that she died at her Hollywood Hills home from complications related to diabetes. Marshall was also a successful director. She directed the movie Big and became the first woman director to have a movie gross $100 million. She also directed A League of Her Own in 1988. Penny Marshall, 75. We'll be right back. 